Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the immaculate heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins for the intentions of all my relatives and friends and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intention of the Holy Father for the month of January, for the gift of diversity in the Church. We pray that the Holy Spirit may help us to recognize the gift of different charisms within the Christian community and to discover the richness of different traditions and rituals in the Catholic Church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, as we enter in the presence of the Lord, as we begin this new day, let us take a few moments to thank the Lord for all that He has done for us. We see that right from the time of our birth till now, there have been many instances or events where the Lord has worked wonders in our lives. He has guided us, He has protected us, He has shown us the way, helped us to overcome challenges and difficulties. And in this way, we can identify Him guiding us all through our lives. But there are occasions wherein we find it difficult to recognize His presence among us. We find it difficult to identify the blessings and the graces. And here we see that it is in these occasions that we need to specially ask the Lord to give us the grace that we may be able to identify those graces, those blessings in our lives. And therefore we see that the first thing to do is to be grateful to the Lord for all that He has done. And therefore as we begin today's morning prayer, let us begin on this note of gratitude. Let us ask the Lord to help us identify His presence in our lives. And therefore, let us begin by thanking the Lord for all the things that He has done for us. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for giving us talents, opportunities and various gifts that enable us to become better persons and also that enable us to reach out to others and make a difference in the lives of others. Lord, we also want to thank you for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones, and all those who play a very important role in our lives. We see that it is these people 
who have been instrumental in making us who we are. They are the ones who have devoted their time, energy and effort. And as a result of it, they have molded us and they have made us better individuals. So today, Lord, in a very special way, we ask you to bless all their endeavors and give them all the graces that they may require in life. We also thank you, Lord, for giving us the gift of this day. A day that would help us in many ways to appreciate the good things that you have done for us. A day wherein we may complete some thing that was left behind. Or a day that may present to us various challenges. Whatever be the situation, Lord, we ask you to be with us and guide us. Allow us to be led by you. Lord, we also thank you for the opportunities, for the experiences that you have given us in life. There have been many experiences wherein we have enjoyed and these are the experiences that we want to cherish in life. But this, at the same time, there have also been those experiences and those moments wherein we have found it difficult to accept them. These are the experiences that have been learning experiences. They have taught us a lot in life. Though they may have been hard, bitter, but still they have given us a valuable lesson. They have made us stronger. And therefore, Lord, we also thank you for those moments which have helped us to become strong, which have helped us to become better individuals. And Lord, we also thank you for giving us opportunities to reach out to others, to make use of our talents. And thus, Lord, we ask you to be with us, guide us throughout this day. Lord, allow us to be led by you, so that whatever we do, our actions, our words, may reflect your love, joy and mercy to the world around us. Help us to become your instruments, so that you may work in and through us. And therefore now, my dear friends, let us all close our eyes at this moment and let us praise the Lord that he has woken us up in this morning. We thank him for the good health that he has given us, for the good night's rest. We thank him for keeping us safe and sound, for protecting us from all danger, from all harm. He has kept us in his love and at every moment we see that his gaze is upon us. He never abandons us. He is always there guiding us, protecting us, showing us the right path. He loves us and for all this let us praise him, let us thank him and let us glorify him. Lord, as we offer you this day, we ask you that you be with us. Help us to make the right decisions. Help us to do the right things so that we too may become worthy instruments, that we may be worthy workers in your vineyard. And therefore, my dear friends, let this day be a day of joy and blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We shall now reflect and meditate on Psalm 64. As usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm and then we shall take a look at the psalm in detail. And therefore, when we look at Psalm 64, we see that it is a psalm of David that addresses the theme of protection from enemies and assurance of God's justice. And therefore, we see that the psalm can be divided into three main sections. Now the first section is basically a plea for God's intervention against wicked enemies. And this is something that we'll find in verses 1 to 6. The second section of the psalm, verses 7 to 9, will speak of declaration of God's judgment and the righteous rejoicing in his works. Therefore, the final section, verse 10, is a final affirmation of trust in God's care. 
And therefore, let's take a look at each of these verses in detail. Now, verses 1 to 6 go like this. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion and the workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Bitter words that they may shoot in secret as the blameless. Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. They encourage themselves in an evil manner. They talk of laying snares secretly. And here we see that David begins by addressing God, expressing his plea for protection and deliverance from his enemies. Here we see that David seeks refuge from the wicked individuals who in a way try to engage in secret plots, do things secretly, use their words as weapon to destroy others, to make havoc of their life. And we see that this is specially done against the innocent, against the blameless. And in today's world also we have so many instances wherein the innocent are being targeted wherein the cruel, wicked people use various ways in order to take advantage of the innocent and the blameless. And therefore, David here describes the deceptive strategies that his enemies use and also the wicked people and also the confidence that these people have in their own plans. They are sure whatever they do will work. And therefore, we see that David is suggesting to us that all these cruel, wicked people who have such wicked plans, these things stem from their heart. It is something that they conceive in their heart itself. Now verses 7 to 9 go like this. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. So he will make them stumble over their own tongue. All who see them shall flee away. All men shall fear and declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider his doing. Now in this section, David declares God's judgment upon the wicked. He expresses confidence in God's intervention. And thus he states that God will shoot arrows at them and cause them to stumble. In other words, God will take appropriate action. He will humble the proud. He will bring justice to all those who face injustice. And in this way, all the wicked, all those who do evil will be humbled. They will be brought down. And therefore, David envisions a scenario where the sight of God's judgment will invoke fear and will cause the people to recognize and proclaim the works of God. And therefore, the deeds of the wicked, though they are done in secret, all of that will be exposed. It will be brought to light. It will be out there in the open. And their plans will come to nothing. And therefore, all their plans will be destroyed. So therefore, David emphasizes the need to place faith and trust in the Lord. And finally, in verse 10, we have the conclusion of the psalm. And therefore, the verse goes like this. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him. All the upright in the heart shall glory. Once again, a consolation for all those who have been facing difficulties in their lives, all those who have been victims of injustice. And therefore, the psalm concludes with an affirmation of trust and rejoicing among the righteous. Finally, justice will be served. The wicked will be punished. And therefore here we see that David declares that the righteous will find gladness in the Lord and they will place their trust in God. The upright in heart will boast in the Lord and they will celebrate his faithfulness and justice. And therefore overall we see that Psalm 64 presents a plea for God's intervention against the wicked enemies and it expresses confidence in his judgment. It also highlights the deceptive tactics of the wicked 
and their plans to harm the blameless. And therefore, the psalm assures the righteous people that God will protect them and all that they need to do is place their faith and trust in the Lord. It emphasizes the ultimate triumph of the righteousness and the recognition of God's works among his people. And therefore the psalm will serve as a reminder that God sees and judges the actions of the wicked and he provides security and justice for all those who do the will of God. Therefore, my dear friend, let us now spend a few moments reflecting on this psalm. There may have been many things that would have touched us. Could be a verse, could be a sentence, could be a thought or a word. Remain with it. Allow it to take root in you. In this way, we see that the psalm will really be meaningful to us and will be ultimately be able to draw fruit from it. And therefore, as we spend these few moments in silence, allow the word, allow the thought to take root in you. Let it become part of you. So that ultimately all your works, actions today will be able to radiate the love, peace and mercy of God. That you too will be able to praise the Lord in all your works, in all your dealings with others. And thus you will be a worthy instrument to work in the vineyard of the Lord. Pray to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince, of the heavenly host by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy O Sacrament Divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude prayer for souls in purgatory. Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen.